This video is made to give an ideas of what is involved in computer building. It's not an instructional video. Please get professional help especially when working with the electrical side of wiring a computer, thanks. When choosing a PC case, you can choose between a full tower, or a mid tower. A full tower case is large, you have more motherboard choices and more expansion room. A mid tower case is smaller, which means support for fewer motherboard sizes, fewer PCIe expansion slots and drive bays. Also there is limited fan and radiator mounting options with a mid tower case. To start building any PC, get your tools ready like screwdrivers, remove the panels from the PC case, and leave them somewhere safe. Your new PC case should come with either a bag or box of accessories. Motherboard mounting screws should be in your accessories package because every case has different mounting screw needs and different thread designs. Some PC cases like this mid tower case has thumb screws to remove the front panels and a screwdriver is needed to remove the back panel. Notice this PC case comes with a bag of accessories and not a box. Before installing any components, two fans have to be moved from the top of the case to allocate the AIO liquid CPU cooler. Unscrew the fans and locate the fan wires at the back of the PC case and unplug them. When you place your fans at the bottom where you want them, make sure you keep the wires to the back of the case, to make it easier to feed them through to the back and attach them again. Keeping the wires at the back also keeps the wires hid and out of sight. Screw your fans in place. Next get your motherboard ready to put into the PC case. Notice the gold colored screws on the back of the PC case are already pre-screwed onto the case. These screws are known as standoffs and there are usually about 8 to 9 of them. Line your motherboard up with the standoffs and screw it into place with the screws that came in the PC case bag of accessories. Screw all the screws in on your motherboard, don't miss any. Next get your AIO CPU cooler ready. The box should contain a radiator, fans, a pump, screws and brackets for either an Intel or AMD motherboard.
Place the radiator on the top to see which position you are going to fit it into the case. When you know where you are going to position the radiator, it helps you to know which position to screw the fans to the radiator. With the long screws which came with the cooler system screw the fans to the radiator. Make sure you place the wires of the fans all to the back of the PC case to make it easier to feed the wires through to the back to get connected. Be careful you don't screw through the radiator. Fit the radiator with the fans attached to the top inside of the PC case with the smaller screws supplied in the packet. Any more of these screws there? The radiator and fans are now installed in the PC case. Next, we have to attach the bracket on the pump to be placed on the CPU. Make sure you use the correct bracket. My motherboard is an AMD, so I fitted the AMD brackets to the pump. If your motherboard came with mounting brackets screwed to the motherboard around the CPU slot, then remove them. The fittings that came with the AIO liquid CPU cooler will be used to secure the pump in place. With the bag of screws that came with the AIO cooler system there will be four large screws. These screws are screwed onto the motherboard around the CPU slot on the motherboard to hold the pump in place. Screw these large screws into holes around the CPU holder. Some motherboards require a back plate which comes with the cooler to attach to back of motherboard to hold these screws in place, but I didn't need the back plate. Next get your CPU ready to be installed. To install the CPU open the latch known as the retention arm. When you take the CPU out of its packet don't touch the pins, hold it by its edges. Put the CPU in facing the right direction. Notice there will be an indicator on the corner of the CPU and the socket, which looks like a small triangle shape. Line the two indicators up and the CPU will fit in its socket. Seem to drop down all right. Close the retention arm when the CPU is inserted.
when the CPU is installed, put thermal paste onto it. It allows for an efficient transfer of heat from the integrated heat spreader of the processor to the base plate of the CPU cooler that is designed to dissipate the heat. Make sure when applying the thermal paste that an insufficient amount might not cover the surface area needed in order to be effective. Also too much paste applied reduces the efficacy of the paste, due to the metal surfaces being too far apart, and also risks spilling out onto the motherboard during installation. Some people advise not to spread it over the CPU and others suggest it's better to spread it, and that is why a spreader comes in the packet with the thermal paste. Fit the pump onto the top of the CPU and screw it in place. Make sure you fit all four screws. To install RAM open the latches on both sides if your board has them. Many motherboards now only have one latch to open. Line up the first stick facing the correct way, when aligned press down until you hear it click in place. If you have more RAM, then repeat the process. If you have two pieces of RAM but have four slots the lever gap between the two sticks. Now we will install the M.2 internal SSD by first removing the cover. Insert the M.2 in its slot the correct way and align the gold connectors on the M.2 SSD with those on the PCIe slot on the motherboard and insert at 30 degree angle carefully. You might have to screw it in position. Don't over tighten the screw. Then remove the blue plastic on the cover to reveal the heat sink and screw the cover back on again. Now get your graphics card ready to be installed. Remove the PCIe expansion slot brackets from the back of the PC. These metal strips have to be removed because they occupy the space where the graphics card is to be fitted. Fit the graphics card into the first PCIe Express slot on the motherboard. You will hear it click in place. 
screw the graphics card in place. The cables needed to connect the graphics card consist of 8 pin which is a 6 plus 2 pin PCIe power cable. Each pair has a 6 pin and a 2 pin connector that is used either as a 6 pin cable or combined as a 8 pin cable, depending on the power requirements of the graphics card. Tidy the graphics card cable as best as you can. The other end feeds through the back of the case to connect to the power supply. The cable for the graphics card comes in the power supply box. The other end of the graphics cable goes into the 6 plus 2 PCIe labeled on the power supply unit. Next, we will feed the 24-pin connector cable to the motherboard. This cable comes in the power supply box. This cable supplies electricity to the motherboard and other parts of the computer system. This cable connects to the power supply labeled 24-pin ATX on the power supply unit. Beside the 24-pin connector is a smaller connector called the USB 3.0, which connects into the port beside the 24-pin. Push this connector into the slot beside the 24-pin connector. USB 3.0 ports on your PC case are great for storage devices such as flash drives, external hard drives and video input devices because they have a higher data transfer rate. Next, we will connect the audio lead and USB 2.0 lead into the motherboard. These usually are fitted at the bottom of the motherboard. I have two connectors to connect to the top left of my motherboard. These connectors are power connectors. These power leads comes with your power supply unit. When you connect these leads feed them through to the power supply unit. Connect the CPU pump wire to the AIO pump fitting on the motherboard. The leads you see at the bottom right of the motherboard are known as the front panel connectors. They are a block of small connectors on a motherboard that controls the power on, power reset, beep code speaker and LED light indicators on your PC case. Please refer to your motherboard manual how to fit these. Also remember to connect your fans at the back of the case. All right. Turn this on. 